Hello everyone. Today we begins with the physiology of gastrointestinal tract. Gastrointestinal tract which is also known as alimentary canal. It's a muscular tube extending from the mouth to the anus. It measures about 10 meters or 30 feet in length and comprises following parts. Starting from the oral cavity, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, anal canal, and the last part it is the anus. So first of all mouth. This is the cavity containing anterior two third of the tongue and teeth is the mouth cavity or oral cavity or buccal cavity. So this is the cavity which containing anterior two third of the tongue and teeth is the mouth cavity which is also known as oral cavity or buccal cavity. Tongue in the digestive system plays two important roles. It tells the taste of the food and helps in the chewing and swallowing of the food. So what is the use of tongue? It tells the taste of the food and second helps in chewing and swallowing of the food. Next is the teeth. The parts behind the mouth cavity, this is the pharynx, next part esophagus, stomach, small intestine which are further divided into three parts, duodenum, jejunum and ileum, large intestine which includes the cecum, the most initial part of the large intestine, appendix, colon. The colon we are going to divide in three parts ascending colon, transverse colon and descending colon. Next is the rectum and anal canal. Organization of the gastrointestinal tract. The alimentary canal which begins from the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine rectum and anal canal and associated glands these are the salivary glands pancreas liver and gallbladder functions of gastrointestinal tract broadly we are going to divide gastrointestinal functions in two types digestive functions and non-digestive functions so first one digestive functions in the digestive functions there will be the ingestion of food digestion of food absorption of digested food and ejection which means excretion of unwanted undigested food by the alimentary canal in the form of feces so these are the digestive functions of the gastrointestinal system which includes ingestion of food digestion of food, absorption of digested food and ejection which means excretion of unwanted undigested food by the alimentary canal in the form of feces. Non-digestive functions of the gastrointestinal tract. The main non-digestive function of the gastrointestinal system is its role as immune system. The lymphoid tissues in the tonsils, adenoids, payer space constitute an important part of the body's immune system. This provides both the humoral and cellular immunity, which is especially effective against the microorganisms which try to enter the body from the alimentary canal. So these are the non-digestive functions of the gastrointestinal system. The main non-digestive function of gastrointestinal system is its role as immune system. 
most important. Now the layers of digestive tract. We are going to divide digestive tract from inner side towards the outer side in four layers. The innermost layer it is the mucosa. Outside of the mucosa there is a layer of submucosa. Outside the submucosa there is a layer of muscularis externa and the outermost layer of the digestive tract it is known as serosa. So from inner side to outer side it begins from the mucosa the most innermost layer the submucosa muscularis externa and serosa. Serosa it is the outermost layer of the digestive tract. So here this is the mucosa, this is the submucosa, this is the muscularis externa or it is also known as muscle coat and here it is the serosa. In the mucosa there is a muscularis mucosa which contains the smooth muscle and next one inside the muscularis externa there are two types of muscle. The inner muscle is the circular muscle and the outer muscle it is the layer of longitudinal muscle. There are two nerve plexus are present. First one submucosal nerve plexus which is present in the submucosa and the second one myenteric nerve plexus which is present between the circular and longitudinal smooth muscle layers and it is present in the muscularis externa. The submucosal nerve plexus is also known as Meissner's plexus. So first of all mucosa. This layer is concerned with secretion of both the digestive juices and certain hormones as well as absorption of various nutrients. It contains blood capillaries, lymph vessels and layer of smooth muscle which is called muscularis mucosa. Next submucosa. This is a dense connective tissue layer that contains larger blood and lymph vessels as well as network of neurons called submucus or Meissner's plexus. Submucosa. This is a dense connective tissue layer that contains larger blood and lymph vessels as well as a network of neurons called submucus or Meissner's plexus. Muscularis externa, an outer longitudinal layer and inner circular layer of smooth muscle. In between these two inner circular and outer longitudinal muscle, there is a myenteric plexus or orbage plexus is present. These are the network of neurons in the muscularis externa. Serosa, this is the outermost layer and it's a outer fibrous coating of the gastrointestinal tract. Types of movements in the gastrointestinal tract. First one propulsive movement which means it moves bolus forward means it moves the food towards the anal from small intestine towards the large intestine. And the second one it is the segmentation movements. Segmentation movements includes the mixing in the small intestine. So here the segmentation movement mixes the food whereas the propulsive movement moves bolus forward towards the anal canal. Now the electrical activity of the smooth muscle which are present in the layers of gastrointestinal tract. So these are the slow waves which is uh, in the resting condition. There is a fluctuation in the resting membrane potential of the smooth muscle continuously. Now whenever it is stimulated by stretch, acetylcholine or parasympathetics there will be the spike potentials or depolarization occurs and these are the spike potentials and uh, stimulation by the norepinephrine or sympathetics there will be the hyperpolarization. 
so this is the electrical activity of the smooth muscles which are present in the gastrointestinal tract so first slow waves rhythm is maintained by the frequency these are not the action potential frequency varies in different parts usually don't cause contraction except in the stomach inside the stomach these slow waves causes the contraction of the smooth muscle but not in any other part of the GIT. This may be due to slow undulating sodium potassium pump. Now the second, these are the spike potentials which are due to action potentials. When resting membrane potential is more than minus 40 millivolt, there will be the development of action potential and this action potential are known as spike potentials. This higher the slow wave potential, more is the frequency and it's last longer. These are the slow calcium and sodium channels are the reason behind the spike potentials. Now the next is the basic electrical rhythm or BER means basic electrical rhythm. This is maintained by the pacemaker cells in the outer circular muscles. So there are three types of electrical activity in the gastrointestinal smooth muscle first one slow waves spike potentials and basic electrical rhythm and most important this basic electrical rhythm is maintained by the pacemaker cells in the outer circular muscles